We are looking at enhancing the missing operators activity from the YByte Python curriculum available at www.ybyte.in. In this video, we are going to look at a very, very interesting enhancement where notice in my questions, I'm going to introduce brackets. For example, here my question is 8-77-36 where this is inside a bracket, which means no matter what operator it is, it's going to get computed first. Now, I do not know what the answer is, but let me just try. I have a feeling it's something multiplied by 10. So I'm just going to try plus, let's say, you know, minus, plus, 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 say multiply and plus. That happens. That's not the right answer. In fact, the right answer is uh, minus plus multiply minus minus. Now, this is very interesting because this now notice what has happened here. I'm doing 8 minus because of the bracket. I compute this first 77 plus 36. That is uh, 1, uh, 1, 1, 3 times 36 and minus 390. So that priority must remain. And that is indeed minus 4450. So this was a very interesting question. Notice the bracket comes and changes the, the way the whole thing is computed and makes the question quite interesting. Now, in this video, we are going to see this in a very, very step-by-step -step manner. How do we introduce brackets? What are the challenges that come with it? And how does all of this work out? In Before moving forward, however, let's think carefully about what do brackets do? Well, like I said, brackets are highest priority, which means that, you know, you are going to compute whatever is inside the bracket before anything else. So for example, 2 plus 4, you know, inside brackets times 6 is 36 because 2 plus 4 gets done before anything else. On the other hand, 2 plus 4 times 6, in this case, multiplication is higher priority. So 24 plus 2, 26 is what you get. So brackets, you know, uh, or let's say parentheses, change the game uh, in quite a significant manner. Now, it turns out that there are really five steps that need to be done to incorporate brackets. We are going to go through them slowly. The steps are deciding where does the bracket starts, you know, where does the bracket start? Uh, the opening brackets, deciding where does the bracket stop, the closing brackets, computing the right hand side, taking into account the brackets, as you know, that changes the priority. So, you know, the right hand side has to be computed again. Framing the question also with the brackets and finally presenting the correct answer along with the brackets. Now, uh, these are very logically broken down so that we can do this in code. Now, for the purpose of this discussion, I'm just going to limit to one pair of brackets. Uh, again, you know, you can always do more, but then obviously the more you do, the more uh, conditions have to be taken into account. So let's look at each of these steps. You know, first point, like I said, where does the opening bracket start? Now, really, opening bracket can start before any number except for the very last number. So what does that mean? I can have an opening bracket starting here. I can have an opening bracket starting here, starting here but I cannot have an opening bracket starting here because that is odd. Likewise, for the closing bracket, I can have it close anywhere after any number except the very first number, which means that I can have my bracket closing here, here, or here, but I can't have it closing at the very beginning. So that is illogical. Now, if I put these two together and a little bit of common sense, I notice that, in fact, the bracket must close at a later point compared to where it started, which means that I can have situations, for example, bracket started at in the beginning of the first letter, uh, first word, um, at the beginning of the first number, it closed after second number, or it started in second number, closed after third, started on second, closed after fourth. All of that is perfectly fine. What is not okay is this situation where the bracket has closed before the bracket even opened. That's illogical. We are not going to do that. Now, what I'm trying to get at is that we are going to use two numbers to determine where the bracket start and stop. For the starting bracket, like I said, it can start just before any number except the last number. So I'm just going to pick up a random number between 0 to n numbers minus 2. Now, what does this really mean? Remember, totally there are n numbers. Now, I'm saying the bracket could start at index 0, at 1, at 2. Because there are four numbers here, n numbers minus 2 is actually 0, 1, 2. Uh, I can't start a bracket over here. Now, uh, that's why I just choose randomly between, say, 0 and n numbers minus 2. For the stop of bracket, I just say bracket start plus one. Now, what this means is that I'm limiting myself to scenarios of this sort. So for example, I start at zero, I end at one. I start at one, I end at two. Now, of course, you can modify this condition to accommodate situations like this, but then a few more considerations come up just to make sure that the brackets are all logical. So first, Let's just do this part so that we know where these brackets are going to appear. Like I said, this is quite simple. I'm keeping it simple rather. I come into my code here, uh, you know, which I'm, I've been developing and I'm just going to. So I come into my code over here and I tell this guy to, you know, um, before anything else, so I'm, 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 you know, 
I, I have all these lists already generated and so on and so forth. I just create two variables. I say PRC start and I just said, like I said, I just set it to random dot rand int, um, you know, uh, let's say zero to n numbers minus two. So the, the starting point is randomly chosen, but then I put BRK stop is equal to BRK, uh, you know, start plus one so that the bracket just contains exactly one operator that's just by design now having done this let's just to compute the rhs now clearly this is going to be a little bit involved however it turns out that using the eval method is in fact the simplest here so the reason is that we can cast the entire question as a string and we can use eval to calculate it we do not have to worry about the extra logic that comes in because of the added priority of the bracket so, so we are going to basically form the entire question, including the brackets as a single string, and then just use eval to correct cal calculate the correct answer. And hence the challenge is not really so much in calculating this. The challenge is just to form the entire question while incorporate, incorporating the brackets. Now, again, I urge you to look at the video, uh, you know, which I'm linking here about the eval method, because we're just going to modify that code to incorporate the brackets. Because previously remember to do the eval to i have to still convert the question into a string and we had seen this before so all i was doing is that i was just getting down my question in a single string i'm going to do exactly the same thing here except that i'm going to add a few pieces of code where which i marked here so notice kk counts through the numbers if kk is equal to bracket start remember that's the point i need to start a bracket before doing anything else i introduce an opening bracket here next as i go through these lists i just have to figure out do I have to close this bracket or do I not have to close this bracket? If I do not have to close this bracket, then nothing changes. It's just like earlier. But if I do have to close this bracket, I go and close the bracket first before I put the next operator. Because remember, the bracket must close immediately after the number. Likewise, if the last item is where, if the last you know uh, number is where the bracket has to close, if that happens to the break, uh, you know the bracket stop, then I just put a bracket in the end. Otherwise, everything remains as it is now once i do this i can then compute it compute the rhs by just using eval temp uh, not too hard if you think about it very very logical but let's see this working so that it becomes more clear to us so previously i have this you know this piece of code which i used to calculate uh, the, the rhs using the eval method now i'm going to do the same exact loop here just that we'll add a few lines of code so i go and say for example if kk is equal to brk start so if this particular you know uh, number is where i must start the bracket if that is the case then i just first go and do temp equals to temp plus you know i put an opening bracket now i get on with the uh, so so that is done right now i look at every number and only thing i have to worry about is the brc brk stop so i again check if kk is equal to say brk stop which means the bracket must close here uh, you know so I, i'm going to just take uh, okay let's just put this in the else condition which is the earlier condition uh, let's be a little bit careful for the indentations over here it can get a bit confusing so i take you know if the so if if i have to end this bracket over here then all i need to do is to introduce a you know um, let's say a closing bracket over here and plus the operator that has to come in uh, remember this is when i have to close the bracket but the term is not the last number uh, on the other hand the same exact thing will happen here so i just go and put the same condition here if kk equals to say brk stop then i'm going to just you know uh, I'll, I'll take this same exact thing uh, duplicate this you know i just have to be a little bit careful here if the last number happens to be the one where i'm closing the bracket i just do that here and if it's not, then it's all business as usual. Like I was generating it earlier, I will, you know, just say, uh, you know, print this. Uh, so I'll just create the temp as usual. Now let's see this all working. Uh, you know, what we will do is that we'll print the BRK. So I, I've got a stop input over here. I'm going to say print, let's say BRK start. And so anyway, we know the BRK stop, right? So I'll just print the BRK start over here. So where the bracket starts. And then we'll see the evolution of this statement as it goes along. Uh, let's say if I see this, so I, okay, this part we can go through quickly. So I just say this. All right, so now I've got a long question with all these operators. Let's say I click enter. Notice my 
bracket was at 1, which means my bracket had to start at the second location. And that's exactly what happened when my KK went through this list. So at 0, there was no bracket. It did not put a bracket in the beginning. Um, it put a bracket at 1 because that's where it started, which means the bracket stop must be 2. So it closed the bracket over here. Now, at the end of this whole thing, I have got a situation where, you know, my entire expression is available to me. And indeed, I can calculate the RHS by just using the eval operation because so temp to me is a string right now like this. If I did eval of temp, that is the right answer that takes care of all the precedence and everything uh, because the eval command takes care of it. Now, with this done, we are ready for the next step, which is in fact very, very similar to, you know, uh, forming the stem, except that I'm no longer writing those, you know, operators because I don't want to compute it. In fact, I want to keep these gaps here. Other than that, the logic is exactly the same. It's in fact exactly the same because, you know, I'm just getting these gaps over here. So what I'm going to do, you know, again, the same thing, BRC start, BRK uh, stop and so on and so forth. I just come in here and I just take this entire code, you know, so, the, so I need to obviously form the question, you know. So once again, I'm, I'm just going to come in here and I say, okay, look, if say KK is equal to BRK start, uh, then, you know, QN is equal to QN plus, let's say, uh, you know, this. So I just take this. So if kk is equal to brk say stop so which means do i need to close the bracket well if that is the case i will you know I'll copy this slide control c and control v this thing obviously i have to be careful with the indentation say else so if else nothing changes now again just do it a little bit slowly and you will find that this is really not that hard right so i just go and introduce let's say a uh, bracket over here similarly for the very end of the question i just need to say if kk is equal to say you know uh, brk let's say stop uh, if that is the case then i need to close the bracket over here at the very last you know at the so i'm just going to do let's say copy this uh, i need to indent this do it slowly you know it's not really not that hard so i just need to close this bracket by saying okay look this must there must be a bracket at the very end before i display the equal to sign right so i, I must have you know the bracket closing at the very end else of course nothing changes you know so else it just really nothing changes and i stays it stays exactly the same as earlier now i am asking this question at the end of the you know at the end of the string now remember the one th thing that i must change is the computation of rhs i have called it rhs1 over here so i'm just going to go in here and i say look r it's not it's not rhs it's in fact rhs1 because that is the one which has been computed with eval and that is the one that is right rhs is something else that doesn't account for the brackets yet so i'll go with rhs1 yeah. Now, when I see this, uh, let's see this working. So let's say 12, 32, you know, so it doesn't matter really. Okay. So now I'm going to get a long question. Notice my question has been formed with brackets and the way it's been formed with brackets is starting at the very beginning. So zero was my BRK start. So I got a bracket in the very first term. It turns out that the bracket is not going to change much over here, but that doesn't matter. I still see brackets in the question that I am getting, but I can continue to answer it the way I was. So let's say it just turns out that it's all plus, 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 and uh, you know, multiply. Let's say I answer this. It tells me, sorry, that was wrong. It tells me the correct answer, but now, right now, it's not telling me the correct an answer with the brackets. But you guessed it. We can do the last step, which is to display the answer with brackets once again by just, you know, doing exactly what we are doing. It's a little bit repetitive but really it's not different so what i'm going to do is that i'm take, going to take the same exact code uh, in fact i'm just going to you know take this same exact code over here and this time round i'm just going to mod i'm just going to keep it over here first and modify this a little bit right so i don't need this part again like i said do it slowly because yeah you know it's kind of we can make mistakes quite easily in this all I need to do really is that instead of these gaps, I need to put, for example, the say list ops and kk, right? Because that's all I need to put there. Um, if this is the case, again, I just need to put plus list ops kk. Um, 
likewise for the very last one in fact that's it so for the very last one i don't have to do anything else that's it that's all i need to do uh, let's see if this works so if we get this 12 32 let's say plus you know plus plus all right so let's just try a long question my question is in this case okay let's just try plus plus minus plus plus notice it tells me the right answer including the brackets now this looks a little bit cramped i can fix that by just giving let's say some spaces so for example you know in between the list ops i can just give a couple of spaces now, we have seen this before so you know i don't uh, have to go this in you know it's the same thing right we have seen this before i can just give some extra spaces over here right and likewise an extra space plus let's say plus this now clearly this part is not hard it's repetitive in some sense so we can in fact optimize all of this but important to understand the steps that are going on and important to do them logically so let's see this once again let's say this uh, say no so that's strong now I ask a long question now here i've got something interesting um let's just say i say something wrong let's say it tells me the right answer along with that formula and that looks quite nice notice the bracket is being taken into account quite nicely i hope you found this interesting if you find that this way of learning is interesting if it makes you think better do look at our website because in at ybyte.in we learn python programming through such fun activities take care thank you so much enjoy programming